Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today I would like to offer the April reading for the elemental energy of air, which also covers the zodiac signs of Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. So if you are a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or you have lots of air in your natal charts, then this reading's for you. I read intuitively, so the messages that come through may, may or may not be in alignment with what is on the card, but it's what my guides bring forward for me. This is for the month of April 2023. There are approximately four weeks in April, and I read week to week in these videos. So we will go through each week with a guide or guardian, a message from source, and a lesson or a challenge from the tarot. And uh, if you are enjoying this type of content, please, if you're not already, subscribe the little subscribe button for me. And if you like this video, please drop a like and feel free to comment, uh, even with criticisms, as long as we're respectful, that's all I ask for. And with that, we'll get started with your first guide or guardian. Oh, all of the decks that I use are linked in the description below, as well as my website if you are looking for a private or personal reading. So, your guide or guardian for the first week of April for air signs is the goddess Rhiannon and Amazonite. This is the energy of integrity. I listen deeply for the truth Sorry, I gotta get this where I can read it. <laughs> the truth of the heart. I create harmony between the intentions, my words, and my actions. I make promises that honor my soul based on the wisdom of my heart. I make decisions with the courage and boldness. I act with respect for my spiritual wisdom. I recognize the power within me, which I surrender into inspired service for the greater good. I have the strength of character needed to live in integrity with my own heart. I emanate peace and grace. So the first part of this month, is this first week, is really about being your authentic self. Integrity uh, in <laughs> my circle has been referenced as doing the right thing when no one is looking. And that also goes to being upfront and honest with who you are it doesn't mean you have to be bold or hostile towards it, but just be open with who you are. When you radiate from the heart, which is when you're being your authentic self, it allows you to draw the right people to you. Sometimes it's a lesson that you have to learn. Sometimes you're teaching someone else the lesson, and sometimes it's just to resonate together to grow. So you've got the goddess Rhiannon and Amazonite. So the stone is Amazonite. Uh, if you want to find some of that to work with, that's great. But it's really about vibrating into that period of integrity, of being authentic and truthful with who you are, what you're here for, and why you're <laughs> why you're there. So this that first guide or guardian, and I use the term guide or guardian. Sometimes the um, spirit that comes with those cards will say that they're here to guide you along the path. Other times it's kind of as a buffer to keep something away so that would be more of a guardian. And so I say guide or guardian because it depends on your situation as to which of those you need at the given time. Your message from source is from the Starseed Oracle and it is karmic relationships, Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. So while you're living this integrity life, you're learning to be your authentic self, this is where this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. And I'm not saying this in a bad way, it's just something to be aware of. You're being authentic, you're stepping more into who you are, you're tapping into that inner source, and you have um, Amazonite and Rhiannon who are coming through to help you and the reason that they're doing this is you have some karmic relationships that it's time to maybe clean up a few things. Karma in the original meaning was through your lifetimes past and future there's some things that need to be dressed and balanced. We're in a time now um, of instant karma meaning the things that you've done in this lifetime are 
needing to be dealt with in this lifetime. <laughs> you basically, the next cycle is not going to be the same one that we're in. The next cycle is going to be where some things are getting fractured off and people or souls are getting sent in different directions. So this is a really good time to work on those karmic relationships. Are you in a situation, work or friendship? They're not saying marriage at this point. They're talking about friends and um, work. So <laughs> that's a good thing. But if you're in a situation where it was really good, it got you on your feet, it got you moving in the right direction, things were going great, but now it's almost like it's pulling you back. Like you've got plans, you've got goals, things have opened up for you, but there's this energy of being pulled back. That could be a karmic relationship in those situations. And that's where you would call upon the Amazonite stone and the goddess Rihanna so that you can live your integrity, live that truth even when no one's paying attention, and maybe do some cord cutting, maybe work through some of those karmic lessons. If you work with the Akashic Records, maybe make a trip up there and be like, hey guys, how can we fix this? But you're working through some pretty heavy karma, and they're talking about Orion energy. So Orion in the middle of the belt is the gateway to another um, source of energy. There are people who will say that that is actually the nursery of galaxies because a lot of the galaxies that we have, they can trace back to that area. So that's kind of a cool idea. Um, but this is a time of kind of releasing some of those older patterns, dealing with that karma and that can, and that's where this last word on the card says, that can cause a little bit of conflict sometimes if it's a karmic lesson or pattern that it's just kind of ran its cycle and you're clearing it out it's just going to fade away it's kind of going to melt into the the abyss and you're not really going to notice it's missing until later and all of a sudden you're it's going to dawn on you that oh wait i haven't talked to so-and-so or i haven't um even thought about that job that i had years ago that i was so attached to there's all of these things that just kind of fade away and other times there can be a little bit of conflict but it's because that person has a emotional energetic fill-in-the-blank type of connection and no you no longer need what they had to offer and it doesn't mean that you're hateful or spiteful but sometimes that can become a draining relationship and there's just times when those have to be separated it doesn't always go so well just as a heads up so your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the king of earth so this is the opposite of your energy generous professional responsible and practical a successful time confidently accepting opportunities you're offered in the Midas touch so this card is kind of a heads up don't don't fall for the uh, tricks of the negative aspects of air which is being airheaded spacey forgetful this is saying stay grounded you're working through some heavy energy this month or this week and this is a reminder that it's still good to keep your feet on the ground even though when you're dealing with this stressful stuff emotional especially relationship stress friendship or otherwise it's good to keep your feet on the ground even though you want to take off and go into a fantasy land or become extremely analytical and critical of things where your emotions aren't involved this card is saying no no <laughs> keep your feet on the ground be generous with your time be generous with what's offered because you were offered things and now it may be time for you to return that it may not be to the same person but that's where you're coming into those karmic balances too so but it's really your uh, lesson or challenge from the tarot for this first week is about staying grounded because that's kind of your opposite energy so it's a good thing to <laughs> maybe look into a little bit so let's look at the second week of april for 2023 air and we have it's a very fiery looking card um the goddess bastet and cat's eye well that explains the fiery looking card um <laughs> it's sacred pleasure i melt into the sacred pleasure taking delight in the sweetness of life and the sensuality of embody embodiment i am a divine soul grounded in the temple of enlightenment that is my body my joy is an offering of gratitude to the universe which attracts greater blessings than i could share freely with the world i trigger Oh, sorry triggering a collective awakening into the grace i invite the divine into the sweetness of my life for the greater good of all beings so 
When you work with Bastet, you're working with a goddess of the home, but also of the kind of the marriage <laughs> situation. And so you're getting this energy of enjoyment. When you pet a cat, it purrs. So this type of energy is saying, take care of yourself as well. And as you're doing your self care, it's going to put you into that more positive state where you can radiate out for other people. You're bringing in the energy of cat's eye, which is a similar stone to tiger's eye, but not quite the same thing. And so you're bringing in this extra energy. And what it's doing is when you look at the card, it's a fracture, it's a split stone. So you're merging two different energies and that's bringing you into this peace, joy, happy energy. It doesn't mean it's going to last forever, but the second week of April, the guide or guardian that's coming forward is saying, work on finding pleasure in the simple things. Really tap back in, like your message from the first week, your lesson was stay grounded, and this card is saying, enjoy your body. Your mind is really where air signs tend to reside and air energy but this one is saying but don't forget your body is here and it can you know it's there to be enjoyed and enjoy the world doesn't mean abuse it but it does mean to take care of it and enjoy the simple things like taking a hot bath enjoying the sunshine on your skin or the moon depending <laughs> but it's things like that that is uh, bringing that pleasure in and when you do that when you are happy when you're at peace that energy radiates out and the source of all creation radiates through you as well so you basically are giving a double whammy to anyone you're around and it's a good form so it's making you know gives them a smile there's something to <laughs> be said about smiles um, your message from source is called soul gifts and training it's time to step up which this ties into that message from or your guide or guardian because your guide or guardian is saying you have a physical form, enjoy it, take care of it, allow that pleasure and happiness to radiate out from you. And what that's meaning is you're being called forward. You're being called to shine your light. You're being called to possibly teach, to work with others. Maybe it's um, even something like a soup kitchen, but you're being called to offer some service to the planet, to your fellow man, to your fellow creations. And sometimes that service is as simple as praying for the well-being of everyone <laughs> or praying for the well-being of the people you work with, praying for the well-being of some stranger you saw that you don't even know, but they look like they were having a rough day. You're not imposing on their free will by just offering them up to the creator to um, bless in the best way possible because you're still leaving them the free will to take the blessing or not, but at least you're doing your part to offer that service and when you're being called it's being called to service and it could be an active one where you're like soup kitchens things like that or it could be a passive one where you're doing prayers and meditations and offering um, chants to help heal the soul of the planet so uh, let's look at your lesson or challenge from the tarot it's the four of air time to rest or take a vacation allow more time before making decisions meditation may prove and ans provide answers so you're going through this week and you're it's being a very active week but this card is also reminding you when you're doing these activities there's always time to take a break if you need a nap take a nap if you want to just curl up in it with a blanket and watch a movie for a minute that is a good thing not all the time but they're saying that there is beautiful beauty in stillness and there is a blessing to be had in that so your lesson or challenge even though you're going to feel that pull that you're being called you've got this more um, ag almost aggressive energy there's this reminder that even though you're getting more active don't forget that there's reasons why we need rest felt this knees coming on sorry <laughs> um, so let's look at the third week for air signs and we have the angel Amatil and blue obsidian which blue obsidian I believe is actually a man-made stone but it's still pretty uh, <laughs> This is revelation. I open my heart to the truth. I am willing to see clearly with 
courage and peace in my heart. I am strong enough to be flexible. I accommodate new information and higher perspectives. I trust the perfect love and wisdom that dwells within my heart. I am capable of growth. I joyfully rely on the higher divine timing that governs the unfolding of my heart and healing journey and my life path. Clarity and peace awaken within me now. So this second or third week, you're really working with the first week was balancing some um, karmic debts, maybe figuring some things out. The second week was coming into your body even more fully, enjoying the simple things and following your calling. And this third week, this is the re this is the revelation. This is the revealing of what those first two weeks did. You're working with your heart chakra. So you're coming from the head, you're coming out of your mind, the logical analytical part, and you're coming down to your heart where this is your seat of emotions. And being air, you wanna be more logical, you wanna be up more up in your head most of the time, but there's times it's good to come down. You're working with the passion and that sensuality of the second week and that's reminding you you have a physical body this third week is reminding you about your emotions really bring in those forward and understanding sometimes you have to work through some karma to get your emotions to unlock and that <laughs> it could be part of this but during this third week your guide and guardian are really about helping you get more into your heart understand the truth that's being revealed to you as you're going through this process because these processes sometimes will be very obtuse, very confusing, and having a little bit of an insight and some guidance sometimes is a real benefit. So this third week is really about looking at that. So your message from Source is jump in Andromedan energy, adventure, and saying yes to change. So you're working and in coming into your heart. You're starting to understand what's going on with these lessons with this challenge with this karmic cleaning that's going on and the reason is you're starting something new there's something new there's some new soul lessons coming in there might be some more divine some new divine gifts your um some of your different clairs that you haven't woke up yet your uh, psychic senses <laughs> they may start becoming online during this third week where you're really working on the new stuff You've done the clearing, and that's allowing the revealing of the new that's coming forward. You're being offered a couple of different options, probably more than that if <laughs> if you really were looking. Because um, sometimes you see two, but then when you turn your head, there's like 15 more around you. So always be aware that there's a lot more than two options in most cases. Uh, but you're working with Andromedan energy, so you're bringing in that energy from the star cluster Andromeda, and it's really giving you that boost. What is it you want to change? Where do you want to go? What do you want to create in this life? This energy is saying, this is the time to start working it. This is the time to take those first steps. Make those decisions, uh, like the card says, say yes to this energy. You're working with your heart, so your heart is going to help balance the highly logical mind and bring in a little emotion. So yes, this is the best path, but this one you're gonna enjoy a little bit more. And so it's that whole shifting and saying yes to the more enjoyment part where you've worked through some of that in the second week, this third week is having fun, finding ways to enjoy the simple things in life. So let's look at the lesson or challenge from the tarot for this third week. And see what the angels have to say for this lesson or challenge because I'm using the angel tarot, which is a really awesome deck and it is usually pretty chatty, but for some reason it's being a little quiet today. Um, <laughs> there we go. We have the two of fire. You've come into your own new partnerships or con contracts continuing to move forward. So even though you're doing all of these new things, this card is saying, don't look, don't focus on the path. You've got a lot of forward motion. And when you start to open up and feel and get into your emotions a little bit more, there's this possibility of looking back to being like, oh, nostalgia, it was better back then. Well, it may have been, but you also might be wearing rose colored glasses. So this card is saying you've come so far. You're really stepping into who you are. Sometimes 
the reminder is you still have to let go of the past. There's parts of it you've learned lessons, and those you will always have, but the energetic connections sometimes are no longer necessary. So you've got the two of fire, the two of this passionate, really aggressive energy, and it's saying, come on. And it might be that the person, there may be a person that comes in that's a flash in the pan type person. They show up, help redirect you, get you going in the right direction, and then disappear. It might be someone that you only meet for a couple of days at a work meeting or something that just inspires you. So be aware that there's that uh, fiery aspect to keeping going. The lesson for this third week is there's some fire behind it. So uh, let's look at your fourth week's energy for, oh, that card literally just fell out of the deck. <laughs> Almost dropped it. It is the angel, oh goodness. Lahabiel and Black Tourmaline. I'm not familiar with this angel, so we'll find out. <laughs> uh, it's purification. I create, courageously choose to let go. I embrace healing and renewal. I release and surrender with perfect trust. I am cleansed through a powerful outpouring of spiritual grace. Spaciousness now opens within me, beneath me, behind me, and before me. Within this clean, clear space, that which is outmoded or, abs or absorbed and reborn as an unlimited potential for manifesting new sacredness, now is a time of potential and grace, which I amplify and activate through relaxation and I release and release. I am blessed with the spiritual cleansing and divine protection to begin with and to begin again. So black tourmaline is an exceptionally strong stone. It's very balancing. It's very grounding. It's similar to obsidian, but there's a little bit more oomph to the bringing into balance. Obsidian is great for reflection. It's great for meditation, and it's really strong grounding. Tourmaline adds a little bit more balance to it. So it's not just about grounding your energy. It could be lifting you a little bit when you need that to be in more balance, less grounded, more. <laughs> so... This fourth week is really about finding that balance. You're working on a purification. As you've went through this month, you started off clearing out some karmic patterns and um, relationships. The second week was really about stepping more into your body and understanding your soul's calling. Now, your soul's calling is going to be a little bit flexible and a little bit fluid, but your soul is going to call you to the highest and best option in the moment and that is usually leading you to some form of spiritual enlightenment or spiritual benefit the third week is really about taking those next steps really enjoying the fact that you're in the physical in the moment and what you're going to be working towards so this third week is was about being busy this fourth week is you're moving ahead you're doing the things you've done a lot of clearing and now is a time for purification Clearing is taking a shower. Purification is sanitizing. <laughs> so you're working to clean, you've cleared the stuff out and now it's time to purify your space. And you can do simple things like doing a whole house cleaning, like just clean the house, spring clean the house. You can do it to yourself by doing some deeper meditations, um, saging is huge, but things like that because now you're into a position of purification. You've You've kind of reset a few things this month, and this last week is now that you've done kind of this automatic reset, here's where you're going, and this is the direction. Now you need to clear yourself a little bit more, just kind of make sure to get all the nooks and crannies type of a thing, and then you can springboard forward. So let's see what the message from Source has to say for this fourth week. And you've got two cards. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> um, card one is you're not alone, isolation, physical connection, and community. And card two is earthed, learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. So this is where you get into that purification and really tapping in and anchoring that in. You're not alone is saying you have a community, whether you realize it or not. And it's not just a spiritual community. There's a physical community as well. And it could be just that friend. They don't even have to have the same spiritual beliefs as you. But that friend who 
always is able to get you out of the slumps. When things get a little bit tricky, and they can, especially when you're going through a process of clearing and purification, it's good to have someone you can lean on in the physical. But you also have this reminder that as you're purifying, as you've done the clearing this month, you're going to have that escapism. Air really wants to get out. Not quite like the water emotional escapism, but to the analytical, to analyze it, to really focus, to really get in your head so that you can see the details and pick it apart. The earthed card is saying, that's fine and dandy, but you're not a computer. You're still human. So bring that back down. And that's where having the friendship, having that companion connection so that you do not hide in this little corner of nitpicking everything and figuring out why because the why sometimes doesn't matter to be really honest with you (laughs) you're working on purification this week and so when you're purifying and you're cleaning out on a spiritual level sometimes things happen and you may not understand them for four or five years and I'm not kidding (laughs) so this is where that earth comes in and why you shouldn't this last week while you're doing these clearings take time to do something with friends they're saying really specifically it doesn't have it's probably better if it's not like your spouse but go out with your some um, darts friends or your girlfriends go out and watch a movie or however that works but do something this fourth week that's really about reconnecting when you're going through this process and especially in your head it's good to have that reminder that yeah things might be a little bit chaotic up there but you still have a life and you still have friends in in the physical and in the here and now and that's huge when you're going through spiritual um, cleansing awakening all of the spiritual um, housekeeping that happens (laughs) it's always good to have that reminder that you're still in the physical and you still do have friends that do care for you and this fourth week is kind of a reminder to connect with that So your lesson or your challenge from the tarot is the eight of earth. So this is the opposing energy to you. Skilled work is rewarded, learning all there is to know about a topic and going back to school. So your lesson is to keep your skills and your knowledge sharp, but being this is your opposing energy, not fully yours, because your air, this is earth, um, it's also saying you can swing too far into the trying to figure it all out and it doesn't always mean it's a good thing sometimes when you nitpick especially a karmic pattern or a karmic lesson that's being on um, that's being released you can bring it back and have to redo it sometimes when you're working on clearing out those excess heavier energies the ones that keep you in your head and out of your body things that are helping you not be in your peace because you're constantly analyzing it you're actually working in opposition to your soul (laughs) so this is a reminder to bring yourself in and have fun you can go through these processes and they can be intense you can go through working with other people and kind of understanding joy and pleasure and companionship friendship or otherwise and that's good that's great just don't overthink it is what the the lesson is so Uh, Hopefully these messages resonate for you air signs. Um, If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like below if you enjoy this type of content. And I do lots more than just tarot. I have um, a lot of different spiritual stuff going on right now with some biographies and some just general information. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button and feel free to comment. And even if it's a criticism, as long as we're respectful, I think we all use more of that. So... I will let you guys have the rest of your evening, and I hope you have an awesome month of April, and I will talk to you again in a future video.